Welcome to Adopting Class and thank you for joining this channel and deciding to watch this video. With this new generation questions, they can ask you anything. They can take one of their favorites and put it in a question form, in a case form, and you have to figure it out. Guess what? Cardiac catheterization is one of the board favorites. You should stick around and watch how this case can present, how it can unfold. I'm going to give you everything you need to know about this procedure, their complication, what you watch for. And you can use the same video to answer any questions, either standalone, uh, cardiology question, and or case study question. Uh, so let's take it right with me. Of course, the first case would be a buzzword case, and you got to figure out. 55 year old man present to the emergency room, very important, with complaint of what? Intermittent mid epigastric pain, dyspepsia, diaphoresis, and fatigue when he's going up the stairs and doing garden work. Symptoms last for a few seconds and is relieved by rest. Occasionally, thumbs help with the uh, pain. He came in because symptoms are odd occurring at rest. This is the main reason why he came in because his symptoms now is occurring at rest and is worried. He has angina, hypertension, diabetes, apolipidemia, and GERD. If I had any surgery, he denied tobacco alcohol. He's on appropriate medication, aspirin, nitro, omeprazole, lipitor, lensinopril, and metformin. His vitals are shown. His cardiac exam is normal. The rest of the exams is also normal. What are your buzzwords? Those are the ones I've been lying. 55-year-old presented to the emergency room, complaining of what? Epigastric pain, dyspepsia, and diaphoresis, and fatigue when going up the stairs and doing garden work. These are all signs of chest pain. The dyspepsia is complaining about his chest pain when he's exerting himself, so exertional chest pain, right? Symptoms can last a few minutes and then resolve by rest. So when he's trying to exert himself, he has pain and he stop. It's a form of claudication of the coronary arteries. It's the same thing, like claudication in your leg. You're exerting yourself, you require more oxygen, and you have ischemia. But what is the problem? Keywords, symptoms are getting worse and it's occurring at rest. So this is the buzzword. This is another buzzword. All this is telling me is this patient, he has a history of angina, but thus is getting worse. This angina symptoms is getting worse. It's no more angina. He has turned into something else. So those are our buzzwords. And then we can use that to answer our question. So we are worsening of the angina problem. The next know that the patient is experiencing what? What do you think is the patient experiencing? That's the key. When you have angina, there's two types. There's a stable, there's three crowd. Stable, stable and unstable. And a prince mortal um, type of angina. This is a vasospasm, prince mortal, this vasospasm. So it's not true. Angina. But stable angina is predictable. I know when it's going to occur. So when he's exerting himself and he started having pain, when he's doing garden work and he's having pain, this is stable. If he's at rest, sitting down and having pain is unpredictable. You don't know whether you move, you get pain, or when you lift something, you get pain. That is unstable angina. Okay, so that's what the patient is experiencing. This is not good. He has progressed from stable to unstable, and this is not aortic dissection. Usually they will tell you it's tearing, chest pain, radiating to the back. So that's not that bad. So it's experiencing unstable angina. So now we know the diagnosis. What do we do? They get an EKG. It shows borderline ST elevation. So close to ST elevation, ST elevation means myocardial infarction. And no Q wave. Q wave shows significant myocardial 
infarction. That means tissue has died. The muscle has died. That's when you see Q wave. These cardiac enzymes are normal. But cardiology recommend what? Cardiac catheterization. Which of the following actions by the nurse is indicated? So anybody who is going to have cardiac cat, uh, catheterization, what do the nurse need to know? You have to know what procedure is. You go and your heart is here. They go into your groin. They stick a needle there. And you go through your artery and go into your heart vessels and they fix them and they come out from there. So you're going to have incision in your brain, that's all. No incision in the chest, no incision in the body. They inject contrast, contrast, iodine contrast, and uh, to look for what? Uh, the vessel, and they can examine the vessel and take pictures. Because of this, the nurse needs to do certain things. Evaluate for self shellfish allergy. It used to be shellfish allergy is, I say, a relationship with the iodine uh, uh, iodine uh, allergies, but there's no uh, no more. We don't believe that shellfish can affect uh, cross react with the iodine. So if you have shellfish allergy, you can still get a contrast. So there's no need for you to evaluate. Check a BMP. Yes, because we want to know the creatinine. When you give contrast, you can kill your kidney. So you, you want to know contrast nephropathy as the problem. So this is a problem. Good. Assess for contrast allergy. Yeah, we want to see if his patient is allergic for contrast. Ensure consent is in the chart. Yes, it's a procedure. Make sure the doctor get the consent. Ask for the last dose of metformin. When you give somebody contrast and they're taking metformin, metformin go to the kidney and build up and it causes lactic acidosis. Because of that, we try to hold it at least 48 hours. And when you finish the procedure, you have to wait 48 hours before you can start. So you should ask when was the last time she take metformin. The client, Tell the client he may feel flushing during the procedure. Yeah, the contrast, when you inject into the vein, you have the flushing feeling. And so you should let them know that this is going to happen. They're going to have incision on the chest. Wrong. I mean, there's no incision. It's just a stab wound in small incision in the groin. And so this is wrong and the rest is right. So these are the things you have to know when somebody is going to have cardiac catheterization. Okay, now, patient underwent successful cat cardiac catheterization with two stent placement. They placed two stents. That means if this is the artery and there's plaque, they put a stent here to open it up. They put another stent. So this is something to keep the, the vessel open so that blood can flow. We do the following the nurse should include in the plan of care. So I already have a stent. I came to the clinic, back to the floor. And if you're taking care of me, what should you include in the plan of care? I give you contrast. Therefore, I should flush the contrast out so they get an IV fluid. You can also tell them to drink. Monitor the groin. Yeah, where we went for the incision, stop there. They may develop hematoma. So you should monitor the groin incision. Head of the bed 30, above 30 degrees. You want them to be flat. So you want the head to be less than 30. When the head of the bed is greater than 30, it causes flexion of the hip. And, and the groin, where the clot is, that is trying to stop the groin bleeding, um, will, will, will dislodge and causes bleeding. So head of the bed greater than 30 is wrong. It has to be less than 30. So anybody who have cardiac catheterization, they should be flat and their head should be less than 30 degrees. So this is wrong. Keep the leg with the arterial puncture flat for at least four hours. Yeah. Well, we went and stick that leg to get to the artery, should be flat for four hours. What kind of vitals do you get? Every one hour, Q15 hours, Q15 minutes for the first hour, Q30 minutes for the next two hours, then every four hours, this is what you do. So these are the vitals, you check them. Resume metformin immediately, wait 48 hours. Check lower leg pulses. Yes, you have to, this is the groin, they went, 
and they stick there to go to the artery, this artery go all the way to your leg. If you form a clot, it go to your leg and your leg pulses goes down. So you got to check pulses. Check color of the extremities. Yes, you got to check the color because if you become thrombosed, it will be blue. Check temperature of the extremities. Yeah, if blood is not flowing because of thrombosis, the temperature will go down. These are the things the examiner will ask you. I'm just giving it to you um, so that you can see how they can ask you questions. They are no hard questions, but if you don't think about it, you go back to the pathophysiology and say, oh, this is what exactly is going on. These answer choices are nothing. It's just something that you know using pathophysiology. No memorization. Okay, so that's what the nurse should watch for. Now, three hours, as you monitor the patient, three hours after the procedure, client was what? Anxious, diaphoretic, alert to person in place only, he started complaining of what? Back pain. Exams reveal periumbilical flank, bilateral flank, and perineal ecchymosis. What do you think is going on? Underline the buzzword. Three hours later, what is happening? Anxious. You should be, never be anxious for anything. Anxiety in a client in your test is means somebody is having a respiratory issue or is bleeding. So this is a buzzword. Anxiety after cardiac catheterization is bleeding. Diaphoretic after cardiac catheterization is bleeding. Alert oriented to place and person. That means it's confused. It's bleeding. Back pain after cardiac catheterization is bleeding. Periumbilical ecchymosis, this is what we call Kellen sign, is bleeding. Bilateral frank ecchymosis, this is what we call gray tenor sign, this is bleeding. Peri perineum ecchymosis, this is bleeding. These are all the signs of bleeding that they will ask you, they will trick you, that I've given everything to you. Anxiety, diaphoretic, being confused, having back pain or chest pain, periumbilical ecchymosis, bilateral ecchymosis, perineum ecchymosis, all of them is bleeding. Which of the following the nurse should an, uh, anticipate? If I'm bleeding, what should I anticipate? Select or apply. Pick those that you're confident. If I'm bleeding, expect tachycardia. If I'm bleeding, expect hypotension. If I'm bleeding, expect renal failure. BUN is high. If I'm bleeding, expect perfusion problems. So capillary refill. It's greater than two seconds. So this is good. This is good. This is good. This is good. Try to make it nice and confuse you a little bit, but that's the point. Okay? You see? Straightforward. Now, last question. The patient was, what? Resuscitated for the suspected bleeding. So they give them, the patient, something for the bleeding, blood. He later discharged on with Coumadin for the stent. Which of the following statements need immediate intervention at discharge? So we did well, we, we discharged the patient. So when we're discharging the patient, what do you think we should include in the discharge instruction? They're taking what? Coumadin, right? Warfarin, which is a vitamin K dependent factor, right? I will need frequent blood draw. Yeah, we need to check your blood to make sure that your INR and PT are within no um, expected value, right? For the to prevent the stent from clogging. I will increase my fresh vegetable intake. This is wrong. You have in vitamin K here. Okay. When you're taking coumadin, the amount of vitamin K you're taking should not change. If you take two milligrams of vitamin K, keep on taking two milligrams so that when you're bleeding, I know that is the coumadin that I'm giving you too much. But if you increase your vitamin K, then when you're bleeding, I don't know because you increase the vitamin K, you have too much of vitamin K or because I'm giving you that. So 
We have to make sure that you don't get thrombosis and bleeding. We got to figure out what is going on. So you don't change the amount of fresh vegetables you eat. So this is wrong. Trust me, these two are your board favorite that did always confuse you with comedy. They will tell you increase your vitamin K, decrease your vitamin K. No, you stay where you are. So you eat the same amount of fresh vegetables and then you avoid um, increasing or decreasing um, vitamin K. So I will avoid vitamin K. Wrong. You should stay same, same amount of vitamin K you're taking, okay? If you're taking it, yes, take it there. I will buy a new electric clippers. Yes, you should buy electric clippers because the rosa blade will cut you and you bleed. I will use acetaminophen for my knee pain. Yeah, you should, if you're taking coumadin, you should avoid NSAIDs. And therefore, this is good. And this is the way they will take you back and forth, see what you know. And then that's what I provided in this particular case. And you have everything that you need. I hope you understand. I hope you, you watch this video multiple times to get the clue about cardiac catheterization. It's one of the simple questions case you can get. It's straightforward. You know what they're going to ask you. Either they put a stent in, what you watch for, what you look for, post up, and how to manage the patient. Straightforward. Thank you for watching. And I need when you, if you've not subscribed, subscribe for this video. And you subscribe, put on your notification. The notification is the most important because when I make a video, YouTube will notify you, and you can go and take a look at it and see. Thank you for your time, and all the best of luck. Good luck. Keep charging, and never stop charging. Bye bye.